Yes, it's all about unit testing, spe specifically. En español o en inglés? ¿Cuál quiere? English. ¿En español? ¿Mal English. español o buen inglés? Russian. 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 No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no chance. All right, I heard English, so I'm going with English. Um, <laughs> that's what I wanted to do anyway. So, yeah, unit testing and TDD with clean, swift architecture. <laughs> Specifically, I'm going after Ivan because he did a lot of the legwork. All right. Who am I? Uh, John Kevin Olivet from the United States. <laughs> uh, senior iOS developer with Globant. Before that, I was with Global Logic. Before that, in San Diego with Dance Lab App. Uh, then with BCI for about two years. Uh, fell in with a, a great group of guys over there. Uh, I always believe it's not it's not where you work or how much they pay you or what you do. It's who you do it with. So it's all about your relationships. Uh, somehow I ended up with the. Uh, the title of the experts there uh, for TDD. I'm not really sure how that happened, but uh, it happened. So I ended up uh, teaching teaching some uh, dojos, uh, some workshops for about 16 hours, um, designing exercises, uh, katas for uh, people uh, to, to practice. And um, yeah, uh, that's me in case I forget what I look like. Uh, <laughs> This was uh, my first day at uh, this BCI uh, in a completely Spanish-speaking environment. You see the fear in my eyes. <laughs> what, what was I thinking? <laughs> but it's okay. Okay, how to get good at TDD? Uh, write a bunch of unit tests. Um, yeah, so that was what I did. I had a hard time at first, and I was like, all right, I'm going to understand this by writing unit tests. So I, I wrote unit tests for everything, and then I understood it. They moved me to a different cell, and I was like, okay, right. I wrote unit tests for everything, and then I understood what's going on. So that was just my way of learning the code base. Um, use a testable architecture, clean Swift. Make sure it's protocol. you use a lot of protocols so you can switch in for spies. Uh, write more tests, if that wasn't clear. Um, Okay, the thing about TDD is you need to know how to write unit tests. If you don't know how to write unit tests and you're trying to start with TDD, it's, it's just not going to happen. So write more unit tests. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, you need to have a pretty good idea of what you're going to write before you start. So, yeah, keep that in mind. You need to know what you're going to do. All right, uh, why test? We have a robust code base. What does that mean? Uh, I don't know if anybody's used this, but we've used this for a while. It's to squash, and it does not work well. So whenever you do a squash, run your tests. If something doesn't work or it doesn't compile, you know you messed up. Uh, maybe a rebase or a merge. You've got like a lot of conflicts, and you solve them as best you can, and you think you did it right. Run your tests and see if it works. If it doesn't work, it'll tell you exactly where it is. Uh, Refactor. Oh, I'll fix this. Oh, I can write it better. It should work, but guess what? You run your test. Uh, it didn't work. And it'll tell you. It'll tell you where you messed up at too. So, uh, manual reimplementation. You ever had a branch that was so far out, and there are so many conflicts that you're right. You're like, it's better I just copy and paste it into a new branch rather than resolve all these conflicts. It's happened to me, and uh, where you think you copied and pasted everything, run your test. Guess what? You didn't. You you missed something somewhere, and your unit test will tell you. So these are all these are all uh, scenarios that have happened to me. All right, um, Ivan talked already about the Swift architecture. Um, specifically, this is where most of your your action happens. Uh, maybe you have a networker, maybe you make, of course you have a networker, but maybe you make one call, or maybe you make two network calls. You have a router, but maybe you just go to the next scene, or maybe two different scenes. But within this view controller VIP circle, that's where most of the magic happens. But don't worry, I'll show you how to test everything. Everything. So, um, into the code. Enough uh, about my feelings. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yes, as you said, um, it's all about the protocols. This is what allows us to mock it, uh, or to create, they call it spies in Clean Swift Architecture. 
<laughs> so there's the protocol. It's got the methods you'll need. The view controller conforms to uh, the display logic, of course. Here's your, your view controller spot. It's easy to swap it in. This is what you'll use for the testing. The easiest, the most basic one is to test display movements was called. That something was called. That, and then we get some more specific. Well, it passes the view model, right? It's an optional, and then when it gets called, it sets that to true. So you can say, yes, it was true, and your XCT assert true. And then uh, you have the view model. So you can actually test um, the, 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 um, the variables that are in there. You can test that the name is the correct name or that it's been transformed by the presenter in, in the way that you expected it to. Um, all of these are protocols. The, uh, you know, the, the interactor is a business logic. So this takes a business logic spot made in the same way. The routing, uh, the routing logic here takes these three. Well, you have a routing logic spy, which conforms to those protocols. Um, and they're passed. This is the setup within the test. So you can see that spy interactor instantiated there. The subject under test interactor is not spy interactor. Boom. The spy router is the, the routing logic spy. The SRT router is not the spy router. Boom. <laughs> Done. Um, the same story for the interactor. It's actually business logic. So it conforms to business logic. You have a spy. That's the business logic. It, it's looking for a presentation logic. Well, guess what? You have a presentation logic spy and another presentation logic spy. Worker, worker spy. Well, remember that the worker is not a protocol, which is fine because what we want to do is we want to override the worker. That way we can override the function and we can return whatever we want depending on um, depending on the status. So if we want to return a success, then we return a success. This is a, returns an empty array, but you could easily have one in, uh, case empty array and return that and then create a, a manual object and stick it in there. It's fine. Or you can create a failure. You can create several different failures, any kind you want. Um, of course, we need to pass the failure in the failure block. So um, in base CE, we have um, the entity, entity error, which has associated values, lots of information. I just made one here, a uh, simple one in general, uh, just an enum that conforms to error, pass it in. There's no requirements for, to conform to error, so that's good. All right, back on the, to the regularly scheduled program. Presentation logic, uh, presentation logic, presentation logic for the presentation logic spy. I think you get the idea, right? Uh, it takes a display logic, that's the spy view controller, is the display logic spy. I mean, it, it's, all, it's all thanks to the protocols. Um, the router is a little different. Um, of course, it does have routing logic. It also has uh, this object, it has data passing. Uh, to test the router, they, um, technically you're not supposed to, uh, but you can, and I'm going to show you how. It's, uh, <laughs> you, uh, you make a navigation controller spy, or you can make a, a view controller spy. Uh, that is just that is just uh, a subclass of a UI navigation controller, where you override push, push, present, show, dismiss, pop to root view controller. You can just uh, uh, call it. Push is, push is called, starts at false, and then when it's, uh, when it's called, Changes it to true, XCT assert true. Um, however, um, some people don't do this because if you run your tests um, randomly and in parallel, uh, you can get uh, you can get crashes doing that. So you have to have them serialized if, if you're going to run your tests and not in parallel. So uh, the worker, uh, the worker is kind of where the uh, the, the rubber re meets the road. Um, you can have a, you can do all the, the action in the worker, or you can have a, a networker class which holds uh, your kind of generic calls. Uh, this uses uh, O HTTPS stubs to um, to uh, mock it. All you got to do is intercept the path, and when it intercepts the path, it returns the, uh, the JSON instead. Probably you've all used um, this uh, library; it's very popular. Anyway, and that. Inside your JSON file, you will have the JSON how you want it, uh, and so so you know what it will be. You can make sure that the, the first 
There's Kevin, the amount is what you expect. Uh, the last is Julian, who just arrived here, second. And uh, he's got way more money than me, it, it appears. Uh, <laughs> but uh, that's no big deal. Uh, so that is how you would do it for the worker. Uh, you've probably all seen that before. Anyway, like I said, the majority of the tests will be here. And this is where all the action happens, because you probably only have one network call in the worker, and maybe one or two in, in the router. So this is where it goes. So what do the tests look like? Here's the code you want to test. Um, and Yvonne's uh, demonstration it was do something. But here it's fetch movement. So there's a fetch movements class, there's a request, which doesn't take anything. It calls the interactor to fetch the movements. So uh, the test would be like this. You did load. Uh, it's just instantiated. It's calling there. You want to test that it's not nil. And then you want to assert that in the interactor, fetch movements was called. So remember, you switched in the um, the business logic spy uh, for the for the real for the the business logic because it conforms to business logic. So that's how you can you can inject it. Uh, of course, we just test that it's uh, it's true. And if there are more things, we could actually test the, uh, the individual elements of the request. Uh, we we will do that in the next one. So. Uh, Soon, uh, this is a test from the interactor to the worker. So right now, we're only testing this part, the worker. The next one, we'll test the this one. So right now, we're just testing the worker, this, this one part that's highlighted. So the fetch movements is called. Here's the worker spy. Uh, this one is simple. It doesn't have an enum or a, or a switch statement yet. Uh, but here, we're just testing that it is called when it's overwritten. Uh, this is from the interactor to the presenter. It's the same one, but now instead of testing that the worker is called, we're testing that the response is called. So uh, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, yeah, now it's just these three that are highlighted. Uh, notice the simple one, we're just testing that it was called, and then we're testing the specific ones. It's an array, we take the first out. Actually, it's only one. But, and it's a test name, and it's the amount, and that's what we were passing in the actual uh, in the, the, the actual class, so um, that's what's coming from from the uh, from the array. Um, yeah, that's the same as always. Um, let's see. Doot, doot. 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 There we go. Okay. The last step in the VIP cycle is the from the presenter back to the view controller. So uh, here we go. Uh, the presenter is responsible for formatting the, the information in, in the way that you want it. Sometimes it just comes from the server the way you want it, and you just pass it straight on. Sometimes you need to change it. If you need to change it, this is where it happens. So you take the array, and you know you change it. And here you're actually you're appending uh, suffix of name, the colon, and the amount, and the uh, you're changing it first into a string, and then uh, putting in the, uh, the dollar sign. So in your test, that reflects that too. Here you have the movement test name and the amount, which is a double. After it passes through this code, it should be name, test name, amount, there. And, and uh, well, it is. The uh, display logic spy uh, logic looks the same as always. Uh, it tests if it's called, and then you assign the view model, and then here, you can check that the view model amount is what you expect it to be, and should appear the way that you want it to. So, protocols, yeah. All right, here's, a, here's the part I'm scared of. <laughs> Demo, demo time. What could go wrong? <laughs> Nothing. So, uh, a bit of li live coding. Uh, yeah, so maybe you noticed that uh, there was a fetch, there was a fetch, and we tested that, but we didn't test for the present loading view or the hide loading view. Whoop. Hey, that's kind of small, isn't it? Let's see if we can get it bigger. There we go. Kata. The BCI guys remember the katas because we got to work on those for a while. So, interactor. Boom. So uh, we're not doing TDD just yet. 
uh, because here it is. Present loading, it, the, the code is there. So uh, we just need to write a test for it. Um, the high loading view, it's there too. We just need to write a test for it, that's all. So don't worry, we'll do, we'll do TDD in a bit. So, all right, where to start? Let's start in the, uh, notice we're calling the presenter. So we need to go to the presenter logic spot. This is awkward. There we go. All right, oh, look, there's a little space here prepared. How about that? Uh, I'll just write the first one because uh, I think it's, you guys get the hang of it, actually, and I could probably just copy paste, but why not? Um, called equals, what does it equal? False. All right. Uh, this is the response. Oh, I've typed, you know what type it is. Let's not bother. Uh, called, there we go. Uh, and that should equal true if that gets called, of course. Um, that should now equal the response. Oh, and what type is that? Yeah. Obviously this type. I did that on purpose. I got, uh, I got, I got fast at doing it. Um, so we'll do the hide, hide loading view later. No big deal. No big deal. All right. So, um, now we've got the, the presentation logic spy all set up as it should be. Let's go over to the interactor tests. This one I am going to copy paste because it's a bit longer. All right, so there it is. Um, yay, uh, there's much rejoicing. Uh, this is very similar. We're testing that it's called and we're testing that the title is high. Uh, how do we know it's high? It's, it's high because in the interactor, we said it's high. We said it's high and wait a moment, wait a minute. So that's what it is. We were testing the spot, the title and the subtitle. All right. Uh, Pretty easy, yeah? Yeah, unit testing is easy. I don't know, uh, I don't know what the big deal is. Everybody, everybody got scared. Uh, let's do the, um, the hide loading. Uh, it's even easier because it doesn't have, it doesn't show anything. It doesn't, you don't have to format any words or anything. It just, uh, it just uh, goes there. Boop, 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 boop. If you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm copying and pasting. There we go. Does this work? Ooh. Now I know what you're thinking. Maybe it's not true. So, like maybe it's not doing it. So let's uh, let's get a little red in here to make sure that these fail. Because uh, you know sometimes you test for something and it just always comes up true no matter no matter what you did. So yeah, there you go. They all failed exactly the way they were supposed to. Yay! All right. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, there it is. I'll just put it over there so you can you believe me. All right. Ahem. Let's see. All right. Uh, that was the interactor test, and that was going from the the interactor to the presenter. Uh, the last cycle in that is actually going from the presenter to the interactor. So this is written. We see that it, it's here, but um, uh, they need tests for some reason. That's being tested like implicitly. But don't be fooled. You should test everything because if you don't. You'll find out later when it doesn't work. So um, we'll head over to the display logic. Uh, don't want to lose anybody, but this is all the same as usual, yeah? So boom. You've seen all this before. No questions, I assume. Um, looks pretty good. And uh, we're testing the presenter. Yes, we are. 
Uh, here's the ones we were missing. Same as usual, we've got high. This time we're not transforming the, the, the information in any way. It's just going straight on. But you saw what would happen if you did, if you added like a dollar sign or a name or something. Uh, in this case, it's not. In the high loading view, it's pretty easy too. Um, that one's much more direct. You don't have to test the, the title or subtitle or whatever you have there. Boom. All right, so that was exciting. And I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking is, but wait, what about TDD? So TDD is just the same. Um, it's just uh, in reverse. So we'll do it for uh, the present error view. Um, the only difference is that we start with the test first. So I'll, uh, I'll give you the test. All right, just one. So we are going over to the interactor and we need a test. So this, uh, of course, isn't even gonna build because the spy worker doesn't have the enum yet. It's just, it's just returning one thing. The spy worker is up here, Ooh, how simple. But don't worry, we can fix that with a couple enums. Boom, so now we've got a possible result, success failure. We've got the, uh, the, the, uh, an, er an error that we can pass there. Let's put one in here, bar results. It's of type possible results. Uh, we'll give it a default of dot success. And we need to add a switch statement to our to our worker here, instead of just returning this straight up, boom, now we switch on the result. Success will return one, test name, one, two, three, four. Uh, the failure will return that. Our success uh, it just assumes that it's a success, but we should actually, uh, we should actually make sure that uh, by worker dot uh, results equals uh, dot success. Right, that way we know exactly what we're doing. All right, we still won't get very far with this because uh, we have some more problems. For example, none of this exists. Now, the the way you can do it is piece by piece. You can go to the presenter and put in the present error view called, which will work and then go to the other one. But if your time is valuable, which it probably is, uh, the the shortcut to that is to just go to, you know it's the presenter, so just go to the presenter and pop it in to the presentation logic. Once you do that, the errors will tell you, oh, it doesn't conform, oh no, and it'll give you the stub, it'll give you everything you need. So. Uh, what would it be called? Present. Oh, look, no, there it is. Ooh. So, as there it is. That's that's all you need. It it told you. Um, it'll tell you now about the uh, the spy doesn't conform. Oh no, the spy doesn't conform. So there it is too. And um, so you know everything that you need thanks to the protocol. And it tells you. Uh, I think this code will look familiar to you. Uh, Right, you've seen that before, so don't worry about it. Um, this will probably compile, but it will not pass the test. It doesn't pass the test because we never actually called it. So, boom, here, we never actually handled the error. So that's what, that is the final step. I mean, we've written the test, we've written the protocols, and now the final step is to actually write the code in the uh, thing. Pa chow! There it is. We got the response. It's an internet error. Please check your connection. The presenter is calling it there. Let's see if this works. I kind of hope it does, but you never really know. <coughs> Copy paste was correct. See, see, you think you're doing it right, but if you run your test and it doesn't work, all right, it did. 
But if it didn't work, it would tell me that I did something wrong and it would tell me that I need to go look for it. That, that is kind of the point too. You thought you did it right, but maybe you didn't. So um, that is all she wrote. A little cleaning up. Why TDD? Do you have a question? Yes. <laughs> it's because, uh, did you ever plan to write tests, but you didn't actually do it? Yeah, that's happened a lot, right? So uh, the idea is that you do write the tests, and you will actually write the tests. And you think about the structure and architecture earlier, because the worst thing that can happen is you've developed everything, and you're like, oh, now I'll write the tests. And you start writing the tests, and you're like, oh, no, none of this is testable. Like. Uh, now you have to refactor everything and you know you, you, you're screwed. If you had just started with the correct architecture, started writing testable code, then your life would be so much easier. Um, examples, uh, maybe you instantiated too much stuff inside a function. Maybe you're not using protocols. So if you're not using protocols, how are you gonna mock it? You got a problem. Uh, too many dependencies, uh, that's the opposite. Uh, injection, you got tight, uh, tight coupling. Maybe you've got functions that are doing 20 different things as side effects, and they should actually just be one unit, one function. And uh, well, yeah, better to, to start thinking about that than to try to do it later. And, and then, well, yeah, then you're screwed. Um, also, uh, sometimes there's a problem with views not being re removed. Uh, that specifically uh, happened to me. Like, it seemed it was fine, but the test would crash. I was, why were the test crashing? Well, look through it, views weren't being removed removed properly, and that's, that, that was the solution. Wouldn't have found it without the test. Okay, so, uh, I told you I made uh, katas, I made exercises, well, they're here. So you can go here, there's a PDF, you can practice. Uh, it has the exercises and it has the solutions to the exercises, so don't worry about it, don't be scared. Uh, this presentation, is here. So uh, the eternal, I'll leave you with the eternal question of the tester. Oh, my test passed. Uh, uh, is it because you wrote good code or is it you just wrote bad tests? So more tests, good tests, and that's all there is for. <laughs>